I think this is a great video that we're going to watch together. And um, it really helps give us an idea of like a gold standard of what it would be amazing if we had schools that did things like this. Um, so you're going to see an example. And then we're going to go into details of how can I intentionally plan to do more um, work with the families so we can get to this point in the future. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share my video. Work to help every child succeed and to close gaps in student achievement. We often assume school is the main place that learning is going to happen. Take Esma. It used to seem to her family and her educators that Esma is always at school. Not true, it turns out. Esma and other students actually spend 82% of their waking hours at home or in their community. All those weekends, weeknights, and breaks add up. When they realized that, the educators in Esma's school district decided to work harder on making the most of the biggest partner in her learning life, her family. This can look different in every school, but for Esma's teacher, it means instead of spending his time arranging a traditional open house, he organizes grade-level parent meetings. Here, Esma's family saw data on how the class is doing in math, reading, social and emotional learning. They practiced new ways to help Esma at home and set goals for how they'll help her improve. Everyone learned from each other as the group talked about how to help the students. Also, near the start of the school year, some staff from Esma's school visited her home. They looked for the assets her family members can bring to the educational process. They learned about their languages, their culture, their lives, their world. Grandpa offered to be a resource for other English learner families, and the school also listened and learned from the family's perspective on Esma's needs. They learned how mom helps her calm down and focus. This kind of family engagement also makes it easier for the district to develop individualized education programs for students, including those in special education. The foundation is already there for families to engage in their students' academic and career planning, too, making that more effective. Throughout the year, the family can attend workshops at the school on things like mental health, homework, or career exploration. Esma's mom saw those meetings on a poster in her work break room, and now she's inviting other parent friends to go with her. Esma's school district works with local businesses, places of worship, the public library, and other partners to reach students and families where they're already spending time. The school provides information frequently in a variety of ways so they can reach every family. Text messages are offered in the most common languages of local families. Esma's family gets photos from her teacher so they know what she's doing during the day. Communication between the school and the family is a group effort focused on helping Esma achieve her learning goals. When Esma wasn't sure what to do on a science assignment, her family knew to contact the teacher for a little clarification. Educators take a positive approach as they look for solutions to any challenges experienced on either side. They're always looking for the family's strengths. Also, when mom mentions that Esma has trouble making friends, the teacher knows to refer her to the school counselor. The counselor then helps the family join a local boys and girls club with lots of activities for Esma. The teacher knew to do this because the school counselor led staff trainings on resources available in the community and how to help families access them. There's no danger of a family like Esma's ever feeling like an occasional onlooker. The school knows what families have to offer, and the family knows what's going on in the classroom and how to support it. They feel they are active and regular collaborators and decision makers. The district gives families opportunities to learn how to help children succeed at each level of the school system and to serve on school groups. At school gatherings, Esma's adult stepsister and close next door neighbor also feel included in the community. Staff at the school are trained to be as inclusive as possible, welcoming as learning partners anyone who cares about the child. Esma's school has moved from parent involvement to family engagement. Not surprisingly, engaged families help students learn better. Staff members like their jobs better. Everyone wins. This is backed up by over 40 years of research. Students with engaged families, no matter their income, background, or culture, are more likely to do well in school, enroll in ambitious courses, graduate, and go on to post-secondary education. They also have stronger social skills and fewer disciplinary issues so how do we make it happen? First, we work to make the shift across an entire school district. Sure, at the elementary level, Esma's classroom teacher is the main person her family interacts with at school, but as she gets older and her schooling more complex, collaboration is definitely bigger than one person. 
Really, all along the way, the family's interactions with pretty much everyone in connection with the school, from office staff to after-school staff, from bus drivers to principals, will need to be positive for them to truly feel welcomed. So it's a clear expectation in the district. Every employee has a role in helping every family feel connected to their child's learning, no matter what building or classroom that child attends. In Esma's district, a broad team that included school psychologists, social workers, counselors, families, general and special educators, and after-school program staff helped everyone in the school take family engagement to this next level in a way that works for their community. It worked. Esma's family feels like a valued member of the team. Esma, her family, and her educators feel confident that she is learning and happy at school. We have more information about how schools and families can, as we work to help every. So again, a great example of what high quality, comprehensive, whole child family engagement would be looking like. And I've, I'm seeing in the chat too, of some of us going, you know, that, that sounds fantastic, but how do we do that? Because we haven't been trained, teachers don't have time for this. Um, so I'd like us to think about that. Like, how could we, how could we listen to what we have heard and think about how is this making us feel knowing our realities, but this dream of what we have, what we hope to have of a really healthy family involved in our schools. Um, another thing I'd like to challenge us to think about is, does it does an engaged family have to be on your campus to be engaged? Sometimes a family would wants to participate and they're working really hard at home to help that child or to provide them with the wellness resources that they need. And that doesn't mean that they have to be on campus. So how much does our mindset have to change a little bit about what it means to be an engaged family? Communication at a level that um, is not the education talk, right? Like if we're going to say, right, we're going into state testing right now. How many of us are sending out letters and telling telling our parents and we're using the acronyms of the state testing and they don't understand what's going to be happening with their student or what that means? We've got LPAC, all these different acronyms. Um, even when we talk about wellness resources and, you know, you're going to have an IEP and we're going to come in and we're going to help you with your child and a poor parent is going to be a little bit confused on what does an IEP mean? And as a parent myself, it's immediate of what am I doing wrong that is making me have to have this meeting? It's really hard for me to think of positively about this meeting is going to go well. So there's a lot that happens with assumptions that can be put out there between a school and the family and vice versa. Family could have a lot of assumptions about the schools too. So we have this idea of what we're really hoping to have with family engagement that I think that we need to be thinking about when we are creating these um, teams that are supposed to come together and complete our um, the TSIA, the assessments and the reflections and provide feedback that we want to make sure that we're uh, communicating the right way, but also to have this vision of what family engagement really should be looking like. So feel free to use that video if you'd like and to help with explaining and defining family engagement. 